Um, so my name is Philip Martin, and I am the co-owner of Philip Martin Gallery with my partner, Portia Hein. And I hope that you've had a chance to meet Portia, either in the gallery or at the fairs. I am incredibly excited to be talking today with Lori Nye, who uh, her work is the subject of a fantastic exhibition called My River Runs to Thee. It's a total thrill. It closes tomorrow. So this is your, your day, two days here to come. Um, and it's just incredibly exciting to have an opportunity to talk with you. So thank you for joining us. How are you doing today, Lori? Doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, well, you know, I started here with just a few installation shots. Do you want to talk a little bit about the show, where the title came from, things you were thinking about? Um, yeah, the show title, I mean, I always have like a few running show titles. This one was like early on, one of the ones I had in the mix, um, because I had made a painting in the past that had the same title. And I loved the uh, the poem, which was um, an Emily Dickinson poem. And it just got me to thinking about, you know, I'm always thinking about place, especially when I'm concentrating for the last few times I've had um, solo shows, I've mm -hmm. thought about my place, uh, where I live, where I'm from, you know, being in LA and going back and forth between here and, and Tennessee. And so that poem just resonated with me in terms of like, wherever I am, the river is flowing, wherever you are, the flow is, you know, is there. Mm -hmm. So that's just summing up. That's not, <laughs> there's a yeah. lot to that poem that I really like. It's very layered. Yeah. But that's that's the gist of it. I was thinking about the show in terms of like both places, not just the South and not just the past. Well, the poem is a, a conversation between the river and the sea and this yeah. interesting uh, feeling of giving and receiving and giving again and these kinds of cycles. Um, what about water? in your work or place? Or do you want to talk a little bit more about some of those important important topics? Well, I mean, I'm drawn to water. I grew up uh, kind of on the river. We had mm -hmm. a, a houseboat growing up. My dad instilled being on the water in me from a very early age. You know, I went fishing with him when I was very young. He got me, you know, just really like, it was just something that our family did. Yeah. But we spent weekends together, and a lot of times we would spend weekends at the Tennessee River on the boat. Yeah. yeah. So that is where waters began. I'm also huh? Pisces, uh -huh. <laughs> and so, right. so I'm a water sign. Sure. It just makes sense. Um, there's so many. You know, water is such an emotive uh, metaphor, and it's a romantic, um, a romantic metaphor in a yeah. lot of ways. Yeah. Do you mean romantic with a capital R or romantic with a small R? I mean, I mean the movement, or, or or are you talking about romanticism, the movement, or romanticism in one's well, life? I would say both. Yeah. yeah, I would say both. Yeah. Well, water, of course. You know, paint is a liquid. Um, your paintings are incredibly sensorial. This is the first thing I think of with water. You think about that sensorial feeling um there's all these feelings you know what about what about any of those kinds of that feeling of of, of this of sense in your work perhaps because color is one of the things that really uh strikes one when you come into this show well I think I use color and like again I use color kind of the way I use water I mean everything for me has uh there's a psychosis to it I guess psychosis uh, yeah. is the right word but sure. there's like um you know, there's a feeling in, in the color. And I always like try to stay for me in a liminal, I'm more comfortable in kind of a liminal space, kind of an in-between space with uh -huh. the work. Even if I'm I'm making something that uh -huh. I'm in front of, like I, you know, a few of these paintings were from Echo Lake, Echo Park Lake, mm -hmm. because it's uh -huh. it struck me. I just like ran across it one day when I visited my friend Mimi. Mm -hmm. um, I and I was on my way home and the park was like so beautiful and it was all day yeah it was a crazy goal so I wanted to evoke 
that feeling I had when I was there. Yeah. Um, but I didn't want to describe it or, or like, I don't like to, I didn't want to yeah. make it over again. Yeah. Or try, yeah, try to, totally. yeah. So yeah. it's more about feeling for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's a key in your work and it's in right, you know, in terms of what you're saying, at least, you know, this feeling of, of in a painting, do you describe something? Do you, you know, or do you communicate an experience? It's more about an experience. I feel like it's a, it's a more in, inward journey. Mm -hmm. I think being in nature is an inward existence mm -hmm. um, as much as it, is, as it is experiencing it outwardly or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and these paintings, yeah, I mean, they're, they're about the experience of nature, but they're, they're about a lot of things. Um, they're about the, the feeling of escape. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that I convey that in, you know, and probably in the color more than anything. Yeah. And why is escape important or what do you, what do you mean by that? Um, I feel like I've been kind of doing this or I've been kind of like thinking about this theme for a long time, but it's like kind of, it's, it's evolved in an interesting way. And mm -hmm. um, I've always thought, I mean, for a while, I've been thinking about just the extremes that we live in, you know, mm -hmm. um, and especially with climate change and, and mm -hmm. with the, the sort of existence of that. And then, doing this stuff and being in the art world it's a very different world than me thinking about wanting to be an activist or be you know sure. thinking about climate change and all these things yeah. so before i did these works that were landscapes i was doing like that more visionary stuff that was like yeah kind of talking about the same thing and but trying to be cathartic in the way that i paint like trying to you know just exist with a, the reality um yeah of what's of, of what's happening in nature and 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 being present with it mm -hmm. i mean is that uh it's interesting because when you hear escape um there's escapism yeah but there's also the idea of escape which actually as you pointed out and i've learned a lot through through talking with you and 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 you introducing me to people that have been influential on you that i mean you know, escape and art making is a a real qualified historical term. I mean, people in France in the late 1900s, the, the Nabi, for example, escape is a word that they're using. And they're talking about individual human experience in the context of the this kind of real change, for example. Does that resonate with you? Or does that feel like a particularly modern experience? Or um, Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we kind of like exist and isolation, you know, artists. Mm -hmm. um, and this is my way of trying to be louder, even though I'm making beautiful paintings or whatever you want to, you know, it, they're maybe they're they're touching to some or they feel, you know, I don't know what they feel like to everyone, but mm -hmm. I, I think they propose something kind of um, optimistic. Yeah. And I think that's just, that's just how I'm dealing. And that's how I, that's what I want to convey a yeah. feeling of optimism. Yeah. Well, I think beauty and optimism are radical things. And um, I think one thing I've often, or I've been thinking about recently is painting's role. I, as I keep thinking, maybe painting is actually the cutting edge medium of the moment, meaning that the power of the individual voice, the democratizing aspect of that, that it's accessible to everybody, that everyone can participate in it. And that we live at a time where for political reasons, where we talk about AI, like this is, you know, that that is a top, like understanding our own individuality, feeling comfortable, relating to other people, valuing their individuality. These kinds of questions um, with regard to personal expression are, are at the heart of, of painting and providing um, beauty and optimism and escape and ways to to activate that and seems incredibly radical and very democratic. It does at this day in this day and age. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That may not resonate, but it's been on, it's been on my mind. Um, 
What about this pen? You want to talk a little bit about the motif and the and the incredible feeling of color? Shangri-La. Um, yeah. yeah, I made a small, I don't know if you have that image, but anyway, I made a small painting mm -hmm. of this uh, mm -hmm. when I was in Tennessee. All the small paint, most of the small paintings are, are um, tabletop, kitchen table paintings that I make when I'm in Tennessee mm -hmm. um, because I have limited, you know, I have like a garage and then I have my mom's kitchen. And I go back and forth. I go there a lot. So I made this painting. I was like, I just wanted to make something more visionary and not just be sitting there making um, still lives. And sometimes, yeah, I mean, it just it was just a lovely little painting I had in my studio. And you and I both were like, oh, that painting, what's going on in that painting? And I was yeah. like, yeah, I know. Yeah. And when I went back to Tennessee, I thought it might be nice to try to make that it felt like a safe space to try to make that that yeah. painting on a yeah. larger scale. And if I fucked it up, oh well, I'm just gonna see what I can see. <laughs> so I just like wanted to try that. And I like the idea of really shifting um scale from the smaller ones to a larger canvas. Something really interesting happens. And mm -hmm. it's a little more of an in an abstract or kind of non-representational space than the other some of the other paintings yeah. but they all kind of for me live in the same world so um, yeah I wanted to do that and see what would happen and um I really enjoyed making this painting there's a lot going on in that canopy that is just so interesting and you have to kind of see this painting in person to see that yeah um, yeah this is a, a remarkable picture and I will just quickly go back because we're about to look at you know the feeling of it it's as if you are in a total atmosphere of color physically and sensorily and it's interesting in conversation with the painting next to it in terms of a, as you say a, a, an experience but also related to place um yeah I guess that would be a more pure way of me dealing with escapism. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm not dealing with, I wasn't dealing with an image to begin with or yeah. it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, I mean, that painting just tell was stuck with me every time I saw it, I just kept looking at it. Um, and then this of course is Echo Park Lake, um, which is a motif that you've explored for people who are not from LA. Um, Echo Park Lake is a really uh, significant visual place in Echo Park on the east side of LA. It's historical in that, just for context, Amy Semple McPherson, the televan the tele the radio evangelist who who predates so many, you know, televangelists. Her temple was on this is is still there, and it was on this lake. Um, what does it mean to sort of repeat, to revisit a, a motif in your work or to, or to kind of, yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about, about that? Cause say water fountains we're going to see, for example, and they're, you yeah. Know. Yeah. The water fountains. Well, the water fountains, I've, be, I've been doing that for a while, but I, I've been visiting, that was from visiting this little tiny little, um, mm -hmm. park in, in Germantown. Mm -hmm. where my mom lives um, you know, it's the only like little nature spot I can get to that's very close by yeah and I've become very attached to it yeah. it's really just a dinky cute little park sure. that has some you know some geese and some duckies and just things that I like to like be around and I love walking in that park and there's just uh -huh. beautiful trees and they have a fountain and sometimes it's very janky and they like need to it's like it's just like a like one stream and sometimes it's quite full and beautiful but i'm yeah. obsessed with it yeah um, because i just enjoy like what is the light doing and, and on the lake and uh, and and seeing those things change so subtly i think that's my attachment to like the slowness sure that i find very beautiful and painting in a histor in historical painting yeah uh, artists that would revisit a theme or revisit a place or remake a painting again and again Mm -hmm. um, you know the Monet's uh, ponds or or his his water um yeah. Lily it's like obviously he painted those over and over again and so I'm really attached to the idea of that um yeah. and the in the the actual process of that yeah 
Well, the, so, the whole, you know, I'm captivated by Monet. And if anyone ever has a chance to go to Giverny, which is, you know, obviously north of Paris on the Seine, uh, it is incredible to see those gardens um, when you know Monet's work and to be have an opportunity to kind of connect those. And then, of yeah. course, the, the stories of him and his boat studio that he literally was all it's just incredible to me it's such an amazing wonderful thing yeah absolutely um so this painting here is I think I posted a photo of um the actual image that I took from that I made this painting from and it's of course nothing you know I I made it into what I wanted it to be but it is based on a composition um, mm -hmm. that I saw. And uh, what is this one? It's Fountain at Tapestry Lake. Mm -hmm. um, and I refer to some, sometimes I refer to them as tapestries because it does have this, you know, this flatness. Um, everything is lateral and mm -hmm. I enjoy that. Or, and I also enjoy playing with space um, with just visual tricks and cues but then I like to just flatten it out and be like yeah, yeah well that's just flat yeah well vertical stacking in your work is a real way to kind of um explore the all over of the picture plane yeah yes exactly and I think the two worlds that like my background in surface design and textiles early mm -hmm. on definitely has melded you know with my painting and drawing experience so yeah it's been interesting yeah well this is a remarkable painting and i love the title it's called river weather i hope that we can do a project in the future called river weather because i really think that there's a kernel there that i would love to explore with you and and stuff do you want to talk a little bit about this because this is a big painting yeah it's the largest painting i've done to date mm -hmm. um that the painting, um, Fall at Echo Park Lake, mm -hmm. there's a corner of that one. Are we close to that one? I, uh, anyway. There's, yes, there's a, we are close to it. Okay, upper left of this painting. Upper and, left. And then just the sky portion. Mm -hmm. I was so excited by that. If something weird was going on there and interesting um, that was more abstract than, you know, obviously what was, was actually in the sky that day mm -hmm. and I just I did some drawings from that I wanted to kind of suss that out mm -hmm. and just make a sky painting I mean any of us who have seen that Georgia O'Keeffe huge ass painting um in Chicago that yeah I, I just like I saw that as a teenager and it just blew my mind so I wanted to do not comparing this at all to that but it, you know, it's just like, oh wow, yeah, I'd like to try this. It seems really, really difficult. Like, yeah. there's a sky, and there's nothing else. You can't. There's no trees. There's no birds in the. Like, mm -hmm. there's nothing I can kind of attach to. Yep. There's some comfort in, in those those kinds of subjects, but I feel like it's a, it was a lot harder to just try to describe weather or feeling or the sky or yeah whatever I was trying to do um on a large scale and make it and I wanted it to be sort of kind of well it is it's just kind of visionary and I think that yeah. I kind of I kind of go into that space very naturally um where I just let things happen. This is a very intuitive painting. But then of course, a lot of things happened when I was making it, like decisions had to be made um, in terms of balancing out this painting when I was doing it. And um, it was really, really hot. We had, we, have, we don't have any AC in our studio and I was right. working in the back studio that I share mm. and it was like crazy. <laughs> so I had to work in short sessions in the morning, like, I don't know, like nine, to 12 or nine to one was the max. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'd have to leave it. And then I would take pictures of it and go home and think about it and obsess right. about it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, it was really fun making this painting. Um, 
there's a lot again this is another painting you have to kind of it it looks light on the on the screen but you have to go and see it in person there's a lot of mark making and texture in this one. Oh yeah and wow. also you know we have you know what is it uh, you have made other you made a painting called sherbert sherbet or sherbert um clouds cloud like? sherbert's clouds in clouds. Tokyo. And that was the first painting of yours that I saw that was like an all over kind of skyscape. Um, and there's something interesting, again, in a parallel, perhaps to the painting we were looking at earlier, the Shangri-La painting with its sense of color, where you're expanding. Because someone's asked a question about uh, kind of almost the anxiety of the of the whole canvas, the anxiety in a sense of like filling it and that like. How do you how do you fit, put your spirit, so to speak, in as a maker into a, into a big painting like this and expand into it, as it were? Well, I think it is that key word, um, the anxiety of filling in the space. I mean, <laughs> I've talked about how back we have talked about like wanting yeah. to fill in the space, and then my background also in circuit design when I like did boutiqueing, and I would make these. I must show you these at some point, but these yeah. these fabric, these silk paintings that were just so detailed and crazy. Yeah. Um, I think that's just what I naturally do. And I've been doing that since high school, like mm -hmm. I'm really like feverishly and making up my own scapes and very colorful. And that is definitely embedded in, in whoever I am and whoever mm -hmm. I was back then before I would have, had even found myself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a true, the true essence of who I am mm -hmm. is, is that color and movement and organicism that is flowing like directly out of me. Just, you know, it's very pure. It's yeah. the purest I can be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was a great comment that I had mentioned to you that, um, a, a visitor made that they said that they thought the paintings were psychedelia without the psychedelia, which I really liked. I really liked, I took that to me communicating the energy of that experience and almost the like synesthetic uh, connection of mind and body and emotion. Um, I don't know. I, I, I really, I really like that. I like that. Yeah. I like that. I'm, um, yeah. I, you know, like I said, when I was younger, I used to do psychedelics <laughs> sure. and um, I would draw a lot. I still have some of those drawings and maybe that did something to me. Who knows? Maybe yeah. you know, I'm not, I'm not saying teenagers should do that. I'm not <laughs> just saying, like, I don't know. It, it, I, I used that experience even back then to try to make something really happen, like on the page or on the paper. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was very interesting to see what would happen. So it's probably, it's probably there embedded in, in how I, how I like to look at things. Yeah. I mean, and I'm into psychedelic, I'm into like the 1960s psychedelic sure. kinds of posters sure. and print and stuff like that. And that's definitely, that's definitely there. Well, you also, and you have the whole absinthe uh, sort of period. Um, as a side yeah. note, I saw some Toulouse Lautrec paintings at the Art Institute of Chicago, which are in the room. If you are next to the Toulouse Lautrec, then you've got the Gauguin's and the Cezanne, and there's that oh. big, there's that big O'Keefe painting right over the hallway, over the stairs that we were just talking about. But I was just really into them. As a side note, I think I I feel like she, I have totally underrated that guy. So just completely <laughs> random comment. No, you know my experience with Toulouse Lautrec, correct? I do not. Well, you know, like when, when I was younger, we, we had a huge Toulouse Lautrec exhibition in Memphis at the Dixon Gallery and Gardens, which is a little museum in Memphis. Yes, please. Yes. Actually, yeah. yes. I don't remember this, but you did tell me this. So please tell there us. There were some rich dudes that lived in Memphis that had yes. a huge collection of amazing Toulouse Lautrec paintings. Right. Yes. It's so odd, mm -hmm. but he did. And yes. um yeah, so we were all studying that in high school, right. and I did like a little contest. Right. I got like second place or something. Yes. Uh, we had to make posters. Yes. Yeah. So, I love that guy. 
Yes. Well, you have this you have this great painting called Woman with a Fan that we're saving for something. Yeah. <laughs> and um that you know, pe people here are seeing the all over. There's a they're seeing the <laughs> it's a beautiful painting that I should have. Um, <laughs> um they uh there's um I was what was I gonna say before my smart aleck comment? Uh crap oh i remember we um uh, are having you know we're seeing landscape in your work and color and and this these feelings but you know you obviously have done loads of figure paintings loads of other of of other with lots of different symbols and all kinds of things um anyway i just meant mentioning that you know for the audience if they've not seen those so we have a river here and of course uh we have the title and actually, we had a little comment. Uh, we might have just answered it about um, if you think about obviously the title is Emily Dickinson. If you think about literature or theory, um, I try not to think about theory. <laughs> I really should because it makes you smarter. But I'm developing a theory, painting as the cutting edge medium. My theory. No, I mean, no. I have a, a lot of friends who are a lot smarter than me. If I want to talk about theory or think about theory, I go to Mimi Louder, and you all should too. Um, but I did so much theory in um, at Cal Arts mm -hmm. I, that I was like trying to figure out how to paint. Yes. And then I had to like drop the theory thinking and just yes. paint. And so yes. I let yes. the others, I let everybody else do the theory. Yes. Why well, that didn't work. <laughs> I will say that Mimi Louder is sensible enough to balance her theory with a lot of solid gardening and flowers. Oh, absolutely. And, and it's very yeah. important. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm going to make the comment for those people that are doing uh, psychedelia and theory, um, I think looking back on those things and being out of grad school, my recommendation as an old, as a doddering old person is just to be, people really should be kinder to themselves and the people around them because yeah. it's hard personal. This is a hard job. And in fact, I'm going to give a shout out to a great moment that I had at the armory, which is, I met this wonderful woman who lives on an Island in Denmark off the coast of Denmark. We always get good international stuff, but she's like, I love watching these. And I was just so stoked that like somebody is, you know, that we can do this. And it's a, it's a great thing. So I hope that, that things on the island in Denmark, if we're watching are great. This is very similar to the painting uh, to some degree that you had in modern art recently uh, in London in a major show. Any, anything you want to add to about, about this piece? I started it here and then I like went to Memphis for a while and then I came back to try to finish it. And uh, I mean, I did finish it, yeah. um, but I, it's, wow. It's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, you got to really get close to this one because there's yeah. just, this is about, this is about getting close. And I was thinking about it. And then after I was like, you know what? I should have like had somebody build a bench to put in front of some of these paintings or maybe put in the middle of a room to sit down. Mm. I know a couple of people that have, that went back to the show twice. Thank you to those of you who did that. That's like yeah. incredibly, that just makes me feel like amazing. Um, it's, not, not, it's not at all uncommon. It's been many things in this show. Very, very much happening. Lots of people go. Yeah, I, I, I'm very touched by that. Um, but I do think like my experience painting, I really like to, sit with a painting or just spend a lot of time with it. So that painting you had to spend a lot of time with and get in there and like just enjoy all that flora and fauna. Yeah. Well, we are happy to provide chairs to anyone who wants one. Um, so, you know, I, I also like watching people move around and create their own systems of ordering what they look at, what they don't look at. It's always fascinating. This is a painting called Mama's uh, Flowers. And we, Mama is a figure in many of these works. You mentioned that you do paintings at your table in Tennessee. Yes, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I'll go and get bouquets and, um, or sometimes we'll, if it's summertime, you know, mom will pick flowers and I'll, I'll paint those too. So I just refer to them as moms because those are done in her kitchen. Yeah. Um, yeah, so those are connected to mom and I 
have a just a sweet experience with my mom teaching her how to paint still life. Yeah. She's, she's pretty good at painting. Yeah. Well, it, that's also a smaller painting. So there's a kind of interesting conversation between smaller and larger paintings. We're kind of getting to the end, end here. Um, is there anything that maybe we haven't talked about that you might like to talk about while we look at the last three works? I don't know. Is there? <laughs> okay. I don't know. I I feel pretty good about what we've talked about, but I, you know, never know if there's something lurking out there. I'm living in the moment. <laughs> That's excellent. Okay. Well, I really appreciate everyone uh, coming to be with us today. Um, let's see here. We have a some thoughts of appreciation for our talk. And um, we have a comment. Uh, as an artist, there's this period of working in the studio and then the negotiation of moving the work to an exhibition space and experiencing it in a new context from which it was made. It's then public and you revisit it again and again. People comment and give insight. I'm curious, though this process for the show in particular, through this process for the show, in particular, is there anything that you've learned about your own work this time that has surprised you? Um, well, I was surprised that I was able to make so much work. I was surprised that I was able to scale up in this way that I've mm -hmm. never done before. Mm -hmm. As you know, I was panicking the whole time making this show, not panicking, but just feeling like, no, I'm never gonna have enough work. And then I had too much work. We in fact forgot two things when we yes. used to yeah. Also. So yeah. yeah, I mean, I was surprised that I I could do that, and yeah. um, I had a friend once tell me, you know, you're prolific, you're going to be fine, and I was like, I'm prolific, you know, right. I was like shocked, right? And I don't even know if that's true because I yeah, I don't I don't know if I would say that exactly, but you, yeah. But, yeah, okay. I think I mean I I think I'm consistent, like I consistently make, yeah, but um. I think I, making, I making art is a hard job. It's a hard, hard job. And I think well, it, yeah. it's just a pleasure to collaborate with you. And I think it's, I mean, you're putting yourself on the line. It's hard. It's scary. It's got to be. I don't know. I'm not an exhibiting artist, but I'm, that's my guess. Sure, it's definitely <laughs> scary. I mean, it's definitely like there's a lot of stress ahead of a show. Yeah. And how are people, how are people going to experience the show? Yeah. And I felt like with this show, a lot of, painters in particular talked to me on opening night and had really incredible insights wow. on the work and really like understood a lot about what I was doing in yeah. these very small ways. Yeah. Um, and I really like enjoyed all those conversations, even if they were all like small clips of conversations. Yeah. I feel like with this show, um, you know, I haven't lost any of that feeling of, of wanting to still create a, a vision, you know, a visionary pictorial space and yeah. selling my soul or whatever by being, you know, out there and in the right. art world, and, you know, you yeah. have these like pushful feelings about it. Um, it felt really, really good and touching for me to, yeah. to have that experience. Yeah. 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 Well, I think that you care that the show has amazing grace and a plum and it's really fantastic. So thank you so much for the collaboration. I really appreciate it. And this has been a wonderful opportunity to hear about your thoughts. Thank you so much for sharing them with us. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank and you. Thank you to everyone for coming. The show's up for two more days. We get great visitors to the space, amazing traffic, honestly. It's it's fantastic how many people come to the shows and, and see the work. It really is incredibly meaningful to have so many people that really want to see work in person. And um, for those of you that are in other places, I hope everything's going great. Um, thank you again so much. If you have any questions, you know, just send me an email. I can happy to chat anytime. And thank you so much, Lori. Have a great, have a great day. Thanks, you too. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay.